I'm going to speak to you about composite functions. So this is when we have a function within a function. Have you ever seen the movie Inception from many years ago? It's sort of like that. It's like a, you know, a story within a story. Well, in this case, it's a function within a function. We have some notation that we use just so you can sort of spot it, but it looks like this. What if we have like a, I mean, normally we use things like f of x, right? That means like a function, com like a function of x. That means you have to know what x is to know what f is. Well, in this case, we have, we have a function with a function in it. We often use something like, you know, f, let's say, of g of x. Oops, like that. So it would look like this, maybe. We have to close two brackets, I guess. Or, because uh, it can look like this, f of g of x. See, it's like there's a g of x inside the f of x. So it's like an f of x, except instead of feeding it an x, you feed it another equation. There's another way to write it as well. Sometimes we like to write it like this with a little, looks like a little O here. It means composed with. So we can do, for example, like this, F composed with G of X. This actually still means the same thing, okay? So just so you know, this just means F of G of X. This is like saying we have this thing called an F, we have a thing called a G, and we can find all sorts of things. For example, watch this one. We can say, all right, if I want F of G of X, one way to do it is to... I always look at the outside function first. So the outside function is f. So I do that one first. I have some junk plus 3. See, if I know it was x, it was x plus 3. So watch carefully. I'm going to start by doing f of something. I'm going to leave. I always like to leave like a big, big space like this. I'm going to say it's like this. This is what the f is. f is some junk plus 3. Now what do I feed it? In this case, I fed it an x, so it was an x. Well, this case, I don't feed it just an x, I feed it a whole equation. So in this bracket here, I put in g of x. And g of x is x squared plus 4. Now you can simplify this because a 4 and a 3 can uh, play together, so to speak. We can combine them and say, well, 4 plus 3 is going to be 7. So there we go. I've got my answer for f of g of x. Keep in mind, you can do other things, right? This one here, just so you're used to the notation, I'm just playing around with that sort of g of f of x. I can write it like that. So g of f of x. Well, let's see what I can do there. I first start off with my equation for g this time. g is the outside most. It's the outermost one. So I'm going to say it's some junk squared plus 4. I'm going to leave a big space. I'm going to say it like this. This is how I like to do it just to set myself up. That's g. g is something squared plus 4. And now instead of feeding it an x, like I did before, I feed it f of x, this whole equation. Now this equation for f of x is x plus 3. So that's why I put in the x plus 3 here. There we go. Now I could expand this if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it like that. I mean, you could, of course, go, you know, x plus 3. Now this is a perfect square. You know, so you could keep going and say, well, x times x is x squared. 3 times x plus 3 times x is going to be 6x. I just did two of those at the same time, plus uh, 9 plus 4, so that'll be x squared plus 6x plus 13. I mean, it's also the same thing. Now, we also have f of f of 2. I'm just trying to show you can compose a function with itself. You can say, like, f of f of x. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I think I'm going to start by doing, I feel like doing something different this time. Maybe I'm going to do, I'm going to find first f of f of x. And then I'll put in the 2, just to show you can do it that way too. So let's say I did f composed with itself. Well, my f function is to do x plus 3, so I'll do a big blank plus 3. And inside it, what do I feed it? I feed it f again, which is x plus 3. Well, x plus 3 plus 3 is just going to be x plus 6. And then I can do, all right, so at x equals 2, what do I do? Well, then it's equal to... 2 plus 6, which is just 8. There you go. Now, you might prefer to do it a different way. That's perfectly fine. There's lots of ways to see this. You could have first found f of 2. I can say, well, if I put in a 2 here, that's actually going to be 5. Great. And then I do f of 5. You know, I could do it that way. So 5 plus 3 is 8. Do you see it still works? You, so you can find f of f of x first, then plug it in at 2. You can just find f of 2 directly and then put that into f of x. It doesn't matter. There's lots of ways of doing it. Um, I have something actually for you. I just want to paste this, so watch this. So this here is one that I saw. Oh, so good. 
So we have f of x is a pizza, g of x is a pineapple. Well, f of g of x, then it's f composed with g. See, it's a pizza with pineapples. I love how they did g of f of x, which is a pineapple with small pizzas. <laughs> and actually, I was thinking we should do some other ones too. Like uh, maybe someone is uh, good with Photoshop. I actually just didn't do it. But um, what if you did f of f of x? It means it was a pizza with like small pizzas on top. Or you could do g of g of x, which would be like a pineapple with small pineapples on it. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I think it's actually kind of cute. So let's actually do another example here. So we can do things with more complicated looking functions. And this looks crazy, right? We've got f of x is sine x and g of x is e to the x. But we can still do g of f of x. Why is that? Well, that's because I can just do my g of x first. My sort of g. So let's look at the equation for g. g says to e to the something. So I'm going to do e to the something. So that's what g is. And what do I feed it? I feed it f of x. f of x is just sine x, so I just put that in. Now, is there anything else I can do? Nope. So I can say, therefore, that g of f of x just equals e to the sine x. That's it. So see, some things that look really complicated can actually be quite straightforward. They don't have to be so crazy. Let's go a little bit further. Let's go to something else. It's called the identity function. This is what happens if you have a function that's composed with its inverse. Now we've got to remember what an inverse is. That's why I thought I would remind you here. Remember what an inverse is? That we write it like this. That's the inverse. Remember it doesn't mean 1 over f. It doesn't mean that. An inverse, remember what we do here? This is what we did. Just to remind you how can we find a, an inverse mathematically at least, we go like this. We write it in xy form. We switch the x's and y's and we solve for y. So if I wanted to do this, for example, Let's look at what's going to happen here. This is actually going to be important. So we can do f composed with its inverse. I'll write it like this. This is like f of f inverse of x. It turns out it's also equal to f inverse x composed with f. It turns out that just equals x. This is the identity function. In other words, if you compose a function with its inverse, what do you get? You end up with itself. You end up back with just x. That's actually really important here. So let's see if this is true. So I'll just take a really dumb simple function. We'll do f of x. So I guess I'm going to need to know what is f uh, inverse of x. I'm going to need to know that. So let's actually do it. Let's do it off to the side here. So let's do the inverse. So first of all to do the inverse I'm going to write down in y equals something with x form. I'm going to write it in that form just so it's simpler. Then I'm going to switch my x's and y's. So that's what I'm going to do here. So now I'm going to switch them. So I'm going to say all my y's become x's, all my x's become y's. Then I solve for y. So y equals, let's see, I'll just move my plus 1 over. It becomes x minus 1. Therefore, I can say that my inverse then is x minus 1. See, I needed that piece. So that came in here to tell me that. Now, I'm going to try to test this out and see if it works. Let's try to do so let's do f composed with the inverse. So let's do f with its own inverse. Let's see what we get. Well, I'll do f of f inverse of x. Right? That's just a different way to write it. That's a different notation. If I do that, let's see now. I've got f. f is x plus 1, right? So I do put a big bracket, something plus 1. That's what f is. And f inverse is x minus 1, so I'll put that in. What happens with my uh, plus 1 and my minus 1? Do you notice they're going to cancel out? So I'm going to end up with just x. All right, let's try this one. Let's try the inverse composed with f. So I'll do f inverse composed with f. And just to show you the different notation, I'll do it like this. Well, that's the same thing as saying f inverse composed of f of x. Let's see if I can do that. So let's first do the inverse. So the inverse is some junk minus 1. That's what my inverse is, x minus 1. But instead of x, I put in f of x, don't I? Because I put that in here. So it's just x plus 1. And notice again what happens. The units are here, they cancel out, and I end up with just x. So do you notice I've shown this? Isn't that kind of fun? So well, maybe you don't think it's fun, but there we go. So this right here has actually been shown right here. Right? So this one right here, f composed with uh, f prime of x, that's this one. This one right here is that one. And do you notice 
we get an X here all the time. So notice we get an X. So just to try to show you at least this does work, that's called the identity function, okay? The identity function is a function composed with this inverse always gives you just X again. You just recover the X. That's the important part. Let's do one last example. I like this one. What happened to the plant in math class? Square roots. Oh. So let's look at f of x equals sine squared x. Let's maybe do something with this. Let's try to do, um, yeah, I'll try to do the same treatment for this, I think. Well, let's first actually do, um, I'm going to need to know what's inverse. I'm going to need to know that. By the way, if you're not sure how to write sine squared x like this, another way to write it is it's just sine x all that is squared. That's a simpler way to write it. I mean, this is the way we normally use, but I like sine x squared. Okay, that's what f of x is. Well, how do I do the inverse? Remember how to do the inverse? First, I switch the, uh, write an x and y's, then I switch the x's and y's, then I solve for y. So let me do that now. So I'll take my sine x squared, I'll write it as y equals that. So now I've written in y in x form. Then I take my all my y's turn into x's, all my x's turn into y's, and then I solve for y. Well, first I gotta get rid of this. I'm gonna do square root of x, I guess. It'll be plus or minus square root of x, technically, but we're gonna assume we're just gonna use the positive part. It'll be a little bit simpler for now. Um, how do I undo a sine? I've got sine of y here. Do you know how I undo a sine of y? I do inverse sine. So it'll be inverse sine, of square root of x. Now that looks complicated, doesn't it? Like that actually looks pretty gross. So I could say therefore that that is my inverse. My inverse is actually called inverse sine of square root of x. That is what I'm going to use here. Okay, and that's how I got it. I didn't just came from nowhere. It came from here. There we go. So now let's do this composition. Let's do f of f inverse of x. Let's just see what we get there. So let's do f. So f is sine x squared. So I've got sine of some junk. I'm going to take that whole thing and square it. That's what f is. f is to take sine of something and then square the answer. And what do I feed it? I feed it f uh, inverse of x, which is, although it looks really weird. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give myself more room, I think. So I'll say it's sine of something. I'll say the whole thing is squared. I'm just trying to give myself more room here. I realize I'm going to run out of space. My inverse is inverse sine. Now this looks really gross, doesn't it? <laughs> this looks really horrible. I'm just trying to show you, you can take a really terrible one and see what we do here. Well, let's look at what happens now. I don't know what inverse sine of square root of x is. I don't know that. But I do know that sine of an inverse sine, I know that those two will undo each other. Sine and inverse sine will undo each other. So then I'm left with just square root of x, all that squared. What does that give me? Well, square root and squared, they undo each other. Isn't that nice? So now I end up with just x. Hooray! Do you see? It still worked. That identity function, although it was really horrible looking, it worked. Uh, just for completeness, let's do the last one. So although it looks really gross in the middle, we're just fine. Let's do inverse first. Inverse first is sine inverse of square root of, and now I gotta do a big space because now I gotta put an x. Mm. But instead of putting an x, I put in an f of x. And what's f of x? Sine x squared. So it'll be sine x squared. What's gonna happen then? Hmm, let's see what happens. So although this looks really ugly, hey look, a square root and a square, don't they undo each other? So now I just have inverse sine of sine x. That's all that's left because the uh, rest of them undid each other. And good news again, inverse sine and sine undo each other. So what do I have left? X. Ta-da! It worked. So although this looked really, really terrible, right? Although it looked really, really terrible, you can still do it. You don't have to throw up. It's actually doable. But that's just some practice with composition functions. So when I think of composition functions, actually, I just think about this meme right here. This does everything you need. F of x, g of x, f of g of x, g of f of x. Boom. You can also do it at certain points. That's it.